All right, I'm logging on. You streaming right now? All right. Well, you, uh, I'll practice play by play your color. Okay. All right. Um, hello, my name is Jeff Leopold Chi, and this is you. Actually, you can give I'm, your. I'm, I'm you, Evangelion Jr. <laughs> Uh, Evangelion Jr. Wang. Uh, Vivek, your thing is covering over the champions. All right, so it looks like we have Cassidy Morgana, Caitlyn Nans uh, versus Yasuo, Lulu, and Jax. Interesting. I don't know why they've been Yasuo, but uh, I don't actually remember who's on Purple Team. So it looks like we have... Oh, no. It looks like we have Snickers on... Kale, Kaizen, Windsor. Wait, I don't miss my. Oh, okay. Looks like we're gonna have Last Panda on Lee Sin because he's very comfortable with that champion. So not surprised if he's gonna do Lee Sin Jungle again. We have Bobert4936 making his return to UPSL with a TF game, and we've got Thresh and Lucian Bottom, very strong bot lane. Uh, looks like we have Tai Shen, who I believe is the top laner on Necton. Random guys can be playing support on Blitzcrank with R Flader on Tristana. And looks like Dr. Hay is going to be picking his mid lane champ. You, are you familiar with uh, the champions that Blue Team plays? Yes. No. So, or, okay, I, I understand the Lulu ban. Snickers is very, loves, this, loves the Lulu. And I think they don't, just don't want to play against Jax. Yasuo, I'm not sure about. Oh, the Fizz. I like that. Wait, how are you, gonna, how are you seeing this, Jeff? Go, go to Twitch. Go to Twitch, man. Just watch it from there, and then we'll get into champion. And then we'll go into the actual spectator mode. Okay, you. Yeah. I want your comments on this. The team comps for blue team is Kale, Thresh, Lucian, Leeson, and and TF. TF. And purple team is Nocturne, Renekton, okay. Blitzcrank, Tristan, Fizz. Okay, well, you know, uh, with with the changes to Bloodthirster recently, we have seen a shit ton of... Well, is it okay to say? Okay, we've seen no. a lot of Tristanas recently. Uh, I think recently, like, the last seven games that I've played solo queue, it's always been Tristana, because you know, Tristana has that really nice synergy with Blade of the Ruined King, which is the only thing that wasn't really affected. Whereas, you know, the Bloodthirster nerf was huge. When they had... Uh, like all the champions, Jinx, Lucian, Kaylin, etc., they were all rushing Bloodthirster, and like the, the the new shield change made it basically useless. I want to say, um, so the the I've seen a lot of Tristanas, and I think it's a really comfortable pick. Um, the Fizz from Doctor Hage going mid. Uh, I'm not really familiar with Doctor Hay's uh, mid lane, but you know he is sort of the jack of all trades. So we'll see how it develops from that. Um, I'm sort of surprised they let Kale open though. Uh, Snickers, uh, Mahir, Snickers, Tiaran, Snickers. Uh, I know that he used Kale for a good amount of his climb up plat lane. Uh, Kaizen Windsor is really, really comfortable with Thresh, so uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Thresh does against the Blitz, especially since Thresh is considered one of the counters for Blitzcrank. Um, uh, I know the last panel likes to play some Lee Sin too, but I haven't seen a, uh, seen that as much. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the the runes and masteries that they're they're running? Sure thing. So we see Fizz going twenty five five, which is a hilarious uh, hilarious mastery page. But he's going all the way down. He's got some attack damage. He's got some scaling attack damage. He's definitely got arcane blade for, and that makes sense just because if you're dealing bonus magic damage equal to five percent of your ability power, and you're going DFG and Lichbane on Fizz, you want arcane blade. So he's just being he's just going. Inc incredible offensively, and then some defense, which which is good, I think, instead of utility. Um, and especially if he gets a Twisted Fate, who has got range, he's going to need some of the defense. We don't see anything super super strange, other than the Fizz. For Fizz's runes, he's got a bit of ability power. He's got cooldowns. He's got scaling health. He's got armor. He's got attack damage. He's got armor pen. He looks like he has hybrid pen penetration marks. So. That's actually not too bad, but you just got a mishmash of everything, more or less. <laughs> uh, Tristana has some lifesteal, and I can't tell if lifesteal runes are good. I feel like they're not the, the best anymore, but given that Doran's Blade now gives you lifesteal, I think 
lifesteal runes might actually be okay, given that you'll have about seven. He has 4.5% lifesteal, so he'll have about seven or 8% lifesteal in the game, which is actually pretty good for early. Yeah, personally, I'm not a big fan of lifesteal after its changes with the attack speed at the same time as the attack speed runes. But, um, you know, like given the recent changes to lifesteal, seeing that like Vamp Scepter, all the lifesteal items have effectively been nerfed, like I can see a lifesteal coming into play. You know, what surprised me the most actually was uh, the fact that Mahir, uh, that Snickers yeah. with Kale was not, is running a 21 9 0, where usually you see. Uh, Kale's running either 2703 or even 3000 because uh, you know Kale has that ult, has the potential to play that play that aggressive and use those aggressive runes like that. Actually, yeah, you're right. Doesn't have dangerous game either, and given the fact that Snickers goes incredibly aggressive, and where most of the situations are one v one trades, I think dangerous game would have been an incredibly useful mastery for him to pick up. Yeah, especially. Um, and. So he's going Hyper Pen on Kale, which is very normal. Scales with the passive. No one's going anything different. I want to talk about the jungle, though, because we have a 21-9 Lee Sin versus a 9-21 Nocturne. So Lee Sin's, his ganks are going to be slightly more effective in a 2v2. Uh, the damage output from blue teams is going to be higher than purple side just because of the, of the more offensive masteries and the more attack damage in the rune pages. Yeah, definitely. Lee Sin's, um, I know Lee Sin's a lot, very often like to run the 21-9-0. They really like to go aggressive, go for that Q, is that the execute on the Q, the second rebound on the Q does like 150 damage, 200 damage when it lands. So um, it's really, uh, it's going to be really scary for purple with these uh, Lee Sin ganks. Um, personally, I like to run the 921 because I like to be a little tankier in the jungle and be able to like duel some people without worrying about blowing up instantly and without getting too many squishy items. And like Nocturne, you know, once all you really need is a Feral Flare and a Botteric, and like effectively you become as tanky as you need because because of that passive. Um, one thing that I was sort of concerned about was the fact that um, Purple Team's not running any exhaust, and like this means that they have nothing oh. to mitigate the damage out from Kale. Like I don't, I'm. I know that Ignite gives them a bit extra kill potential power, especially with a Tristana and a Blitzcrank that does a lot of damage, but I don't know if it was worth sacrificing the exhaust for the late game. Definitely agree with you. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear for about like one minute as I change locations, but just kind of keep talking about the level one as that happens. Okay, back, so, so we're hopping in the game right now. We see pretty standard starts from blue side. I'll be back. Um, Machetes, Dorans, and uh, Relic Shield. Relic Shield coming out from both sides. Uh, personally, uh, Relic Shield on Welcome on Thresh, I actually like a lot, but I know a lot of people, especially if they're not comfortable with their ADC, they like Coin a lot, just because um, Thresh being a ranged champion doesn't get that execute ability. So uh, if like he doesn't communicate well, they can miss a lot of CS, but I know that Kaizen Windsor is pretty comfortable on Thresh, so... Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, they don't miss any CS at all, <laughs> I guess, if that's being a bit too generous. Um, it's pretty standard, actually a pretty passive de defensive start by, by blue side. They're just putting the wards up and the hiding back in case of the invades. Uh, TRN and uh, Snickers does like to do his invade a lot, but looks like he will not be doing it this time. He's by himself in the top lane. Purple side, uh, Dr. Hayes not really assuming any sort of defensive position, doing the classic Evangelion defensive <laughs> stand at mid turret while hoping that they don't invade their jungle's strat. You have to protect that turret. Some people like to walk <laughs> up, get that one free auto attack, and that can make a difference during a fight. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, uh, taking tips from Evangelion, I guess. Uh, looks like the uh, oh. purple team actually wants to go for a 2v1 top lane. I'm liking this, but I'm wondering why Thresh and Lucian are also going top lane, or how they knew there's a lane swap happening. Oh, wow, wow. I don't know if they both independently decided to do this, or they saw in one of their wards or whatnot. Because I would just... A 2v1 would actually not be bad for either team, I think. I think Renekton... I mean, Renekton has a good... Uh, does a good job of handling a 1v2, but at the oh. same time, so does Kale. Oh. Can both get the crab? He gets him on Thresh, so some damage going to be down. Thresh is down to half health. That's a, that's a really good start for this lane. 
Yeah, but the, the, remember at the same time, both both supports are using Relic Shield right now. Uh, Blitzcrank popping a pod really early to get back to full health, I don't think that was necessary given the fact that he does have the Relic Shield regen regen coming up. Um, oh, look at look at jungle. Yeah, oh, I was about to say the double jungle, but it looks like Renekton is just going to go back in the lane because it is a... Uh, oh, one. wow, that hook. Good hug by oh, random guy. Oh. On top. Looks like, oh, Thresh manages to escape. He gets ignited, but the heal from Lucian manages to cleanse off the uh, the burn. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what they were doing with the 2 uh, uh the double jungle on purple side. I, I didn't really see. So, you know, a lot of times, like, these 1v2 lanes, they find that it's actually better for the top lane because they're just going to get denied in lane anyways. So it's, uh, it's better for them to just go, oh, another double hook going on. With these sims here to respond. Oh. Flash, for oh, that's first blood. Oh. Good Sonic Wave. Flash did not have come out after the Sonic Wave landed. Yeah, he he was actually gonna die. Once he got hit by the Q, he shouldn't have flashed. I think yeah. he tried to evade it, but just unfortunately didn't. And no wards come out at all. And they should have known that Lee Sin started bottom. Even actually, Lee. No, Lee Sin. Lee Sin Lee started Sin... bottom, right? Yeah, Lee Sin started bottom, but it looked like he got help from the Kale. I I assume they. Assumed that Lee Sin started blue because Thresh and Lucian were top. Looks like we've got oh. our first pause from blue side actually. So um, it looks like Tai Shan's actually in a pretty dangerous situation as I'm as I'm hovered over this pause screen. Um, uh, TRN Snickers is out of mana though, but um, and Tai Shan does have his second dice on his slice and dice, so uh, we'll see how it unravels from there. And it's really unfortunate for the for Tai Shen because he actually had to teleport into lane because he thought he was going to be in a 1v2 situation. So they started the double jungling, and then as soon as they saw the Kale, he had to teleport back in lane just to, just so he wasn't at a huge disadvantage in comparison. So if he goes back now, he's going to miss a lot of creeps. Yeah. At the, at the same time, though, like TRN Snickers is out of mana. He does have the Dorn's Ring, but like like... If he forces uh, the the teleport back or the B from Tai Shen, then like the best bet would be to you know push out push out the lane and go back. But uh, I don't know how strong his pushing power would be, and he might just might as well might just stay in lane. Um, looking at the CS real quick, it seems pretty even from both sides. Um, yeah, I guess Nocturne's just AFK farming. I I think he's gonna go for the Feral Flare. Uh, that's my guess at least. I've uh, seen I've seen Nocturnes go kind of uh, some Nocturnes go for a flare still uh, still but a lot of them have been going all as a loser just because it gives them the overall power throughout the game whereas Feral Flare is very uh, late mid late game. Yeah, it depends on how Nocturne sort of wants to play this out. If he wants to, uh, you know, Lee Sin's a really, really heavy early aggressive jungler. He really wants to put pressure on all all three lanes. He really wants to put pressures on all three lanes, and you know if Nocturne's not there for to respond to that, like Leeson can really easily get all three of his lanes going. So in this case, a uh, rushing Feral Flare might not be the best idea. Yeah, his he's actually really far far behind in farm. Actually, uh, one last thing, Vivek, make sure you rearrange the champions. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, no worries. But yeah, it looks like Nocturne's actually really far behind in farming, given the fact that Leeson already ganked and has just like one more creep, which is still not, not too much big of a deal. But the fact that they have more or less equal farm and Lee Sin already ganked and has a kill, Nocturne's really far behind already. Yeah. Has oh, looks like we have a disconnect from Kaizen Windsor, so hopefully he'll be coming back soon. Um, uh, one thing I want to point out though, is that if Nocturne is going to go Feral Flare, he really does want to get back, go back soon. Like after a few camps, and get to the get, Madrids. Yeah, yeah, to get the Madrids because, like you know, going back it's, earlier, the, the speed that you get is just worth it completely. Like ten. And Madrid stacks even as just the Madrid's razor, so that goes into your Feral Flare. Like the stacks you get with the Madrid's razors goes into your Feral Flare or Wriggles pro, uh, yeah. count. So yeah, going back early really yeah. matters. Something I have seen on a lot of Feral Flare junglers, though, I, this is probably not going to be a case, and it's just some a, a point. Uh, a point to make out a lot of junglers they like to go the madrids and the spirit stone just because um you know the sustain yeah the sustain and they both give their own unique passive i think i'm not completely sure about that so but i'm pretty sure the damage output is amplified when that is the case i might need to double check 
to see if Nocturne decides to go the Spirit Stone in addition to the Madrids, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the the major reason is 100% the sustain though, because yeah. Madrids gives absolutely zero, and because most people who get Madrids... Wait, Madrids player, gives... Madrids gives... Doesn't it give, like, damage on hit? Yeah, it gives damage on hit, but... I mean, the, uh, like, any... regen on hit, right? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I could be wrong. I haven't jungled in months, <laughs> so... I could be very wrong about this. It restores 8 health per auto. Oh, okay. That's still very minimal. It's, it's still and, very minimal, yeah, compared and to... And Spirit Magic. Stone does percentage of the damage you deal, and you can, and that counts abilities as well, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, well, both supports, they do have their flash down for another, like, at least three minutes, so they're very vulnerable to gang stuff. The, the problem I have with Nocturne, though, is, and, like, why I like him as a Feral jungler is that, you know, I don't think that his ganks early are that strong. It's really reliant on landing that Q and maintaining that roof speed, because other than that, he does not have any gap closers. The Fear has a really long tether, tether range, though. And it's actually not that long. It used to be incredibly long, uh, oh, but Nocturne, if he if he's ganking, he really needs to just walk into lane and then get the E and Q and E off at the same time. That way he can walk on the path yes. as he's trying to get the fear off. So yeah. most Nocturnes just kind of start with the Q and try to hit them and then walk along to get to them, but that's a huge mistake. He's He's got to wait for the uh, person he's ganking to kind of move forward just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is, like, with the, the the hooks on both sides in their in their duo lane, like there's just so much extra kill potential from that. And like you know, we've already seen two double hook exchanges come out at the same time. So you know, like these people, they do have their their eyes on the prize, I guess. So we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of kill potential. Um, is is random guy just spawning? Oh, it looks like we come back in. Flash comes out from Renekton. Oh, uh, I didn't even see that. Oh yeah, that was a good flash. I think he probably would have died. Um, think... Doctor needs to take over to make sure none of these none of these creeps go away. And actually, I think oh, he's taking a lot of damage. But anyways, yeah, he needs to take over. He's uh, a lot of minions are gonna get. Kale pushed the tower, and he's going. He is going back now. Um, there, there looks like it, uh, Lee Sin's coming for a gank on mid, but Nocturne is coming back for a counter gank. I don't, don't know if they see each other. Oh, well, looks Lee Sin like Nocturne sees the Nocturne. Not. He's probably gonna go over. Oh, nice. Oh. I like that. Very good spell shield. Block the Q. The stun does not go through. But Fizz is coming now, and he gets stunned. Let's see if he can escape this. Good yeah. playful trickster. Allows him to escape. So oh, no summoners for now. Nice grab by random guy. A teleport coming in from Teleport the from Kale. They might be able to fight this. Just on him. Might be able to jump. She has her flash. No, she, already, she already used her jump to try to kill the Lucian. Good knockout by Blitzcrank. Allows them to kind of get away, I think. Oh, now the Thresh is here, though. So random guy needs to back off. However, oh, Thresh oh. joins mid lane. Oh, good. more fighting! Wow, good hook by Thresh. I can only assume. Kale flashes. Tristana for the jump, kill. does jump away. Um, it was key. She, needs, <laughs> she can't recall right there. She's oh gonna gosh, get fading everywhere. Doctor Hay just kills, um, Twisted Fate in a, a very nice playful trickster. Wait, Vivek, can you hit backspace so we can go back 15 seconds? All right. So it looks like. Stun comes off on Fizz, but the damage from Fizz just insane on the Twisted Fate, and the Fizz gets really low, but ultimately, the Q and E, or W, from Fizz allows him to take down Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate in general is a really squishy champion. Yeah, um, if we go back to live, the, the blue side, you know, the Kale with the Thresh and Lucian, they're just completely melting the tower. This might be able to be, uh, die before, um, the purple can respond. Purple does, let's, does get oh, oh, gets a good grab! Good grab, good kill oh. on the Lucian. Wow, well, let's turn that around. That was fantastic. Oh. Go Doc, go random guy. <laughs> it's important to keep in mind that he was only level two coming into there. He didn't even have his speed boost. He just ran in and uh, saw the opportunity. He may be able to kill this Kale as well because her flash is down. And she has no mana. Oh, the hook. Oh, good hook. So good. Okay, if Chris gets this, wow. Oh. Random guy, why'd you take that? Kills on random guy. Okay. Just honest, though, gets the assist, but that was really good. Uh, it turned out they more or less traded two for two in that scenario, and Fizz did get the kill, so it's now three two. Yeah. So looking looking at the items, yeah, Tristana does have the double dorms, which I can only assume that she's going Infinity Edge because that's pretty much the standard for most normal AD carries nowadays. 
Um, a Lantern coming in, Twisted Fate wanting to gank, but I think Kaizen Windsor made it a bit too obvious there. Interesting roam, given the fact that TF is not even level 6. I, I think, think he just wanted to try to make something happen because he did not want to duel this. Good hook on the Blitzcrank, but Thresh has no mana, so nothing is really going to happen. Some harass comes down, but Tristana should be able to kind of push this wave back. She's got the explosive shot. Oh, Ooh, next thing going in on Kale. And he hits 6 before Kale. He hits 6 before Kale. He's got to be careful though. Lee Sin is near bottom, and he does not have a ward. He has He's not even warding. He needs to go. Oh, good. He's going out to ward right now, so he should be able to escape any ganks that occur. Um, the Thresh is creating really, really good pressure up top. Um, and, like, Blitzcrank does have no mana, and, you know, Blitzcrank, if he doesn't have mana, if he can't pull, he literally just stands there and watches as his AD carry gets, you know, attacked, denied, or whatever. So, a Blitzcrank is forced to back, and Tristana is forced to uh, go back in her corner and wait for it to push the tower from to her to har farm. It looks like she is doing a good job farming. Um, doing much to... better than Lucian. Yeah. Oh, Nexon going in, misses the stun. Has is forced to run out. Mahir's he's either need an ult. Oh, oh he's gonna need an ult. And he's gonna die. Oh! Wait, yeah, he goes down. Good Q, but... Oh, if he turned on the Kale, he might have actually maybe gotten a kill. Yeah. Actually, no, his... his Ruthless Predator, his W, his stun was down. Looking top lane, Nocturne's coming in, and he's sick. He's going straight on the Lucian. Blitzcrank is here as well, so Lucian's gonna die. Oh, good wow! Platform. It knocks up and interrupts the, the lantern. Wow. Well played by Darwin. I mean, by, by random guy there. Um, yeah. Wait, an important thing to keep in mind, though, is that when, uh, going back to the other, other Twisted Fate play, is like, when you're playing Twisted Fate, as long as you go even in lane, you won the lane. Just because Twisted Fate with the ult has so much like, you know, ability to pressure, like like we just saw earlier, and got the picked up the kill on Renekton. Uh, like, that was, you know, that was key. So, oh, not to Nocturne. find some aggressive counter. Good spell Good shield. Spell shield. Twisted Fate flash. Yep. Nocturne's gonna die from this, and someone's gonna get. Oh, this is the Q this from Last Panda. Wow, Thresh has to flash as well. Now we have a 4v3. Diz is looking for somewhere to put ult. Kick on Renekton. Thresh goes down. Thresh still has uh Fizz still has his ult. No, his ult's on cooldown, I'm sorry. Looks like Fizz is gonna die. Ooh, playful trickster over wall force to flash and Lee Tristana gets hit by the Q but jumps away after the Lee the Q. Q's in. Good. Lee Sin might fall actually. Let's bring to sacrificing himself. Oh, wow. This fight is all over the place. Tristana doesn't fall either. Wow, that fight was just really sloppy from both sides. Yeah, the, the focus was just not there. You know, they had the ability to kill many people, and Blitzcrank was giving himself up, but I think people, they just assumed that one person was going to finish him off, so everyone else just decided to chase the other two people. Allowing... Leeson also missed his Q. Blitzcrank needs to give this up. But yeah. Blitzcrank, uh, sorry, Leeson missed his Q, which means that someone could have died. I forget who. Might have been, might have, it's probably the Fizz. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a um, early op opportunity where Lee Sin W to someone and had the opportunity to Q. And you know, being like all Lee Sin jungles, they do max their Q first just because of the execute, because of how much damage it puts. Missing that is like more than half of your damage if you're just straight up autoing and don't have your ult. And unfortunately, Dr. Hayes' ultimate was down, and I'm not sure when it went down. It's now up. But if he had it for the fight, that could have been a game changer. That could have easily been a near ace for purple side, I think. Dr. Hayes doing a really good job farming, especially when like the TF goes to goes away to ult. Looks like TF's ult is almost up again, so he might be looking for another roam. He's probably gonna go bottom. Redekton's yeah. doing really well. Uh, he started a, a fizz ooh. aggressive playful trickster. Two one. Right. This is gonna be really old. Oh, might he turn this round? Q misses on the Fizz. He's probably gonna be able to playful trickster over the Dragon Wall. Uh. Whoa. The Twisted Fate ult comes out as well. This is really interesting. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Almost saved. That was almost disastrous. From Twisted Fate. Both lands on the Renekton. Renekton's gonna go down, but everyone's super low. Nocturne's trying to come in for the help, but his team's not with him. Tristana's not there. Lucian's technically not in a fight either, but 
people are just going down one by one on purple side. Yeah, this game is like really, really crazy and fast paced. Alone. There's just so many like kills being traded. Um, I, it's hard to say which team has a direct advantage, has an advantage right now. I want to give it to the blue team because they have the tower and they're gonna get this dragon. But you know, at the same time, a lot of the pressure that they had came from you know Lee Sin being such an early game jungler. And we'll, I, I want to see if Nocturne is able to uh, recuperate. It looks like he is building Spirit of the Elder Lizard, so... Uh, looks like he's not going to get the mid tower. Fizz is not going to be able to do anything. I'm surprised Fizz actually went all in. I like the triple door it's built. <laughs> lots of health, lots of AP, but he's going to... Lots of wasted gold also. Yeah. I'm... It looks like as a whole, though, blue team is just like pressure, pressuring objectives a lot better than purple team can or, sh or should or can can be doing. They're definitely grouping better. Yeah. I also and want to do a shout out to the to Taishan for getting a fantastic teleport down in the previous fight or two fights ago. Recognizing that Kale's teleport wasn't up and Kale had to run in, even though Kale got into the time fight at the time, it was, that teleport really put a lot of good pressure that, that was really needed by them. Mm, looks like Tristana's not gonna be able to get this tower. Um, yeah, the minions are too far. Like, you know, the purple, uh, blue side is like grouping really well, but they're also leaving many, like, they're, at the same time, they're like covering. They're covering their bone weaknesses. They're like grouping when they know that you know they have the ability to let the other lanes be empty for a while. They're like preventing like purple sides not really capitalizing as much as they should be on the fact that you know when blue goes as five, you know, they leave two two lanes exposed. So, yeah, uh, blue blue sides may like maintaining that control pretty well. Blue sides uh, top and bottom third are very low though, so. Um, yeah. If Kale teleports somewhere, or if Lucian or Gresh leave, ooh, Gresh goes down on the Kale. I don't think he can win this fight though. He doesn't oh, have this guy coming for the ganks though. Oh, the base. The base. He's got to. Oh, oh my oh, God. He misses the grab. That's so unfortunate. And now Renekton might actually lose or die rather. Ooh. Okay, hopefully both random guy and the Renekton can go uh, out safely. But Kale just playing that really calmly, doesn't flash, can't flash anyway. Oh, oh the hole! Oh, wow. Kale may fall down. Twisted Fate yep. is jumping in though. Fizz is trying to follow suit. The stun goes down on Twisted Fate. Rectin comes in, goes too far. Oh, one more auto attack. Oh, that's so unfortunate. All right, Fizz is still walking down. I don't think they have vision of him. Twisted Fate is really far in. Good, good ult from Fizz. He might be able to get the Twisted Fate. Doesn't get stunned. Wow, so the goes down. Yeah, okay, one for one, and they should be able to get the turret. But the we see three happened, people top lane. Lee Sin was, uh, Lee Sin tried to, tried to make a tower dive. Um, a, a good heal and a disengage from Random Guy and Arv later, I mean, Random Guy and Money Hungry allowed them to get away from that dive. Um, I think one thing to note though, like, I don't know if Miz coming down bot was the optimal decision after after TF teleported. Like, I feel like, uh, well, well, I would have done that in that scenario actually. Was, you know, just oh, let TF. Nocturne almost died. Wow. Just let they teleport, save the turret, and Fizz is going to be able to get the bottom turret. So, overall, better trade for purple side. They got one kill, one for one, but they also got a tower, which they really needed the global goal for. Yeah. And Fizz finally has his Lich Bane, which is a huge power spot for him. So we're going to be seeing DF get popped way more often. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, one of the reasons why you haven't been seeing really that many, like, Tower Fizz down minions. is because, like, oh, this was a while back, but, you know, the Lich Bane nerf was pretty huge for him. Like, having the, adding the AD scaling and removing a lot of the AP damage that came out with him. Like, I, I'm not sure how I feel about, like, Fizz's in general at this point. Fizzes can still be really scary. If, if a fizz gets, if a fizz gets more than six kills, you're gonna die. Your entire team. Once you get to DFG on top of the Lich Bane, it's you're gonna be, it's gonna be fighting 45. Yeah. Oh, he's waiting for the Twisted Fate. Let's see if the Twisted Fate gets baited. Whoa, Cutlass from the the Renekton. That's that's an interesting build. Blade of the Rune King. Wow, what do you think about that? Uh, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, um, so what do I think about the Cutlass, Bork, Renekton? It's, it's, it works. I will say that. It definitely works, and his, 
his W, Productin's W, which is is Ruthless Predator, will definitely apply two or maybe three stacks of the uh, Light of the Rune King passive, but it's definitely not as strong. I mean, Renekton has decent wave clear, but the team man just gives him so much pressure. He can just literally push two waves almost instantly because he's got so much AoE with the team man. And the team man gives him a really good amount of damage. However, the Cutlass does give him lifesteal, which he really needed against Kale, but I think he should have just stayed with the Vampiric Scepter, and then upgrade it to the Hydra. You know, the thing is, like, Renekton, I feel like Renekton, when, when, when a Renekton is ahead, you know, he can just go trade with anyone, dump on anyone, but, you know, like, when I play Renekton, when I'm behind, I feel like I just, like, you know, don't do enough damage, can't, like, trade, uh, can't sustain as well as I could be. And, like, I really don't know how to play Renekton when I'm behind, so could you give a little input on that? So, if you're behind, you definitely want to just go tanky. Um, I, he's going to be more beneficial for his team as a tank and a healer than oh. he is. Oh, good TF. Yeah. Gretchen goes on. He's gone. Oh, Don't the ult. What? Wow, what a bug. That was unlucky. A right, poorly please. angled ult knocks him right into the wall right next to where he was. He, no, Sister Fate should have gone through the wall. That, he was close enough. Oh, goes on the leaps in. Come the water, close down on Lee Sin. Oh, flash from Fizz allows him to escape the. Oh, wow. Okay, one for one. I entirely missed that. But, good from the waters and good good fear from Nocturne saves Fizz's life for about five more seconds. Yeah, I, I also think Lee, uh, Lee Sin safeguarded a bit too early, allowing the Nocturne's ult to uh, reach him, like, as he safeguarded to the Kale. So, this gave him the. gave uh, Nocturne the extra distance. Uh, distance closer that we did not want to give up. There are just so many 1v1s happening in this set of trades that are happening in this game. But I think the I think, I think that was a bug. I feel like there's not an ult. Really sure. aggressive jump the, in yeah. by Tristana. Nothing's gonna happen though. Yeah. Um, looking at the farm, Tristana's up 22. Um, and she has the same amount of kills, one less assist, but the 20 minion farm should be a uh, kind of balance that out. Renekton's down 20 farm, Lee Sin and Nocturne in the same farm. This is up 40 farm on the TF. That's insane, and they have the same amount of kills. So this is due to the TF roaming around trying to put pressure on other lanes, whereas Fizz has just been like pushing and trying to secure that. Uh, I want to say a little something though, like, uh, in my experience, when Lucian starts building Boderick and uh, Tristana starts building IE, once she does have her, like, uh, her her BF sword and her pickaxe. You just oh, can't grab on Kale. Good grab. And then get the stun. Kale has the stun. Uh, he holds up our holds us up really early. Ooh, good from the water. Gets a lot of damage down to two people. Wow, this is a really good trade for the side. Off of the Kale. Kale should go down. Let's train goes down. Let's. Oh, actually, two. Oh, good damage on Doctor Hay. Doctor Hay may go down to the Thresh if he can get the uh, play. Oh. Wow, two for one. I don't know if they're gonna turn this. Oh, the total with the W Rocket Jump from Tristana. That was a really good fight. That was a fantastic fight for Purple Side, and they really needed that. That was a good grab on the Kale, and she had to blow her ult really early. I want to like like point out, you know, shout out to Kaizen Windsor. That lantern really really allowed Kale to stay alive and allowed Kale to put on the extra damage. Uh, she did she did get out with lantern, and Leeson went in to try to save her, and Leeson did have her save card, so. They were able to get out without either of them getting completely picked, but uh, you know there was a, mis a slight mistake in positioning, and Chum the Waters caught a lot of people. But overall, just a, uh, I guess a pretty solid fight from both sides. I've got to say, Doctor Hay has been really on point with his Chum the Waters. I don't think he's, I haven't seen a single whip yet. Ooh, good Doctor Ult onto the, yeah, nope, he's not gonna go down though. Force the flash though. They should be able to get this dragon, so they should just turn around and get this dragon. This is not there. They're fighting way too long. Nocturne gets knocked way back in the middle east end. Looks like random guy goes down. And they're still fighting. Another chunk of water goes down. Might hit the least in. This is gonna go down for sure. I say. Oh, Gip goes down. Gib might go down. Oh, he finally goes down. Lisa goes back in. Renekton gets a kill on Lisa. Mighty, will he get the kill on Thresh? Oh, the lights go, not enough. Kale went down, I didn't even see that. I'm sorry. So that's 
Three for three. Uh, the, these fights have really just been coming out like one after another, like the, uh, contesting the objectives. Um, I guess like one of the big things that like I have that like I'm I'm not the biggest fan of is like how Tristana has been using her jumps. You know, like this scenario, she, she got aggressive. Oh wow! She got that the was so oh, okay. Let's look at the gold. Looks great, has 6k. Even though he's got 5 kills, even Thresh has way more. This is probably due to the number of assists. Uh, Fizz has 7.9k as opposed to the 7.1k of PS. Wow. Wait, sorry. Random guy. Really poorly played. I think he's trying to make a play. He's just trying to make way too many plays. Random guy looks like he's made him escape. Nocturne's gonna die for this, though. That's really poorly placed aggression with no vision at all. Yeah, like, you know, he's has been landing these good hooks, but, like, they're not the hooks that he wants at the right time, and he's, like, baiting his team out and trying to save him, and, like, it's costing his team about valuable to Who said can get another dragon? That puts him up 4k. That's good for them. Fizz is able to get his blue buff. So, looking at the, uh, going back to the gold distribution, Kale is about 2k up on the Rectin. Lee Sin has 2k on the Nocturne as well. This is still doing better than TF. Lucian has about 400 on the... And Blue Side is just going to be able to get this turret for free. Yeah. There's no... Purple Side really needs a group. They were actually really strong. Uh, uh, they can fight really strong together. Sorry, they can fight together really strong. Really well. English. <laughs> Looks like Blue Set's also going to steal this red buff, but that's who's coming in. They're actually kind of cornered. Uh, Blue Set dies. This is good and pickup on Blue Set. is going to go down solo to the Lucian. This is going to take this Lucian down, get another blue refresher. This is just all oh, just on to go down. Good on the Q. Blue Set may actually get this kill on Nocturne. Wow, it has the blood flash. Fizz might be able to triple kill. He should be able to kill the Lee Sin. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. Triple kill for Fizz. Picks up four kills. Dr. Hay with the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Fizz, I, okay. Fizz, I want to say something about uh, wait, wait, Kale. Yes. I think oh. Kale right now is Purple Side's biggest problem because. No, like she's just that like that difficult to deal with, you know. Like what do you do? If you burst her down, she's gonna put her all and bait out all your damage. If you don't, she's just gonna uh, lay out the damage. And right now she is 2k ahead, over 2k ahead of Renekton. Uh, Renekton, like you know, when Renekton's behind her, she's not doing the purple side as well. He's yeah. non, he's a non-factor, and he still built more damage instead of just picking up a giant spell or a chain vest, which he really desperately needs. Yeah, he doesn't do um, enough damage to to justify building damage right now. He really needs to be able to just soak soak for his team, and right now, you know, by well, building damage, he's just like not doing anything. I agree. He he just really needs to peel. He's trying to zone, but that should be for the oh random guy. What are you doing? He's getting wow. Good pull on the Lee Sin though. Might be able to trade this, but still 4v3 and Rectin barely manages to escape. Like, oh, the ghost play comes down from. Oh, Tumba Water blows up the Lee Sin They get the pull on Thresh. He might be able to go down. This flashes away. Nocturne gets the kill. Hail kills. Wow. Hail teleports in, kills the Sin. Nocturne might be able to get the Lucian kill. Looks like he's not. This is gonna be. Oh wait, let's bring some five. Uh, four, four, one, two, four, four, two. two though. Yeah, so, like I think, I think the biggest problem, and I think like you know, if this doesn't get fixed soon, like purple team is like just not gonna be able to do anything. Is that you know, Blitzcrank is really forcing situations where he should not be, where like he doesn't have the vision. Where if he, like he sees a grab, he tries to take it, even though you know all of Blue is right there to support him. Where it's like two, two of his own team. He's like looking to get a Baron as well, and with Lee Sin, Kale, and Lucian, all of them being the Fed members of Blue Side, they should be able to get this. But let's see if Twisted Fate, or sorry, yeah, if Leeson is tanky enough. Kale's staying way too long, and if, not, and if Baron does the range damage, Kale might actually die, which might make Baron another weak stick MVP. Looks like Blue Side's gonna get Baron for free. Purple Side knows this is happening, actually. Fortunately, 
now they have five members of Baron. But yeah, I agree with your point. Blitzcrank is forcing situation and he's just getting caught. And the vision is just not good for anyone. Well, uh, like right now, like, you know, Blue side has more bad, right? Like the, the only thing that's like really keeping them that's allowing them to get, maintain in is like this 11-4 Fizz that we have here. So like what Fizz needs to do is he like this, but the problem is that there's too many fed people for him to deal with. Like, he can True. blow them up one by one at a time. Like that, for that to happen, they have to be isolated. Like how he got four kills in one of the earlier engages. But like at the same oh time- Oh my God, Fizz, random guy. Okay, good. Kale was like perfect response to Fizz. So, you know, if Mahir plays this right, Fizz shouldn't be able to do anything. And like, this just doesn't look good at all for her. The kill distribution is also way better for blue side. You've got six kills on Kale, six kills on Lee Sin, six kills on Lucian, four kills for TF. Whereas you look at purple side, Blitzcrank has five of the kills. Trisana only has four of them. Fizz has 11 of them. Nocturne doesn't have any, and we have a 0 8 Renekton. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Blitzcrank is also like the kill leader, like, gold isn't allocated where like, it could, like, most effective, eff effectively be used. Uh, thoughts on just what Purple Side needs to do right now in order to <laughs> just turn. Turn some of it around. Yeah, like see, like people like roaming, being isolated by themselves and just getting picked is like not what they need. Like they do need a, they do need a group and like they need to give this good situations where you know either blow up the TF, blow up the Lucian, blow up the Lee Sin, blow up the Kale, blow up anyone really. But you know, Blue's team's just doing a really good job. Oh my this. God, Twitch chat is getting bombed by Bam. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing again. Oh, very aggressive play by Nocturne that like. See, like, blue side is doing what they exactly what they need to do. Like, they're grouped together, and Nocturne, like, ulted in and had to immediately disengage just because they couldn't do anything in that situation. I like the fact that blue side is bottom. Then again, the bottom turret is still up. So, wow, Kale, what are you doing? Kale's gonna go down. Oh, the Zanyas. Nelson goes down. Fizz is really close to dying, so he needs to, yeah, he needs to escape. Kale is still alive. The hook lands on Susana. He's gonna go down to these things too. That was a really good cue from this one. That was just so bad. Yeah. Blue is doing exactly what they need. Oh! Pokemon is just a big bully die. He can get hit, but no, he has a flash on his side. Now, Blitzcrank gets cold. 100% tolling from Lucian. Props to SSBM Souster. And he finishes it off. Yeah, right now, like, purple is just, like, solo king right now they're like running in one at a time like like they don't have a clear direction of what they're doing blue is doing a good job juggling damage staying together while allowing everyone to like you know look at how low tf is look how low kale just was like this uh like this was all effects of you know good communication allowing people to do damage when they need to and back out when they need to to like reduce all deaths whereas purple just lost a bunch of objectives a bunch of death just because they were going in one at a time they're not playing as a team Wow, Twitch chat, Twitch chat got freaking spam bombed. That's okay. Anyways, interesting. Wow, Renekton, what are you doing there? He is going to go down instantly. That was just poor position. Yeah, it's you said it. Purple side is playing solo queue, whereas blue side is playing like in games. <laughs> Uh, TF has had put so much good pressure with his ults though. Like he's like been noticing when oh look they're solo king right now. They're they're one they're Renekton's in our jungle by ourselves. Let me just ult him and pick him up. Their Blitzcrank's wandering in our jungle. He really wants to ward this push. Okay, we'll punish that. We'll pick him up. And like Let's they're separate from TF. Wow, five turns, two turns right now in the game actually, and it's a 13k gold advantage. Blue side's gonna really need to mess up. Or, ooh, or Blitzcrank can to need to land a bad dot. Although, you've got the Kale, which mitigates the Blitzcrank cook. Also, Tristana needs to get life heal. He does not have a single bit of life heal right now. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, now can just ult it down. Good Kale ult. Today, he needs to have to be a from getting killed by Chum the Water. Fizz, Zanya, but he's gonna have to get out of there. Renekton gets hooked back in. Zero, four. Blue's wow. teamwork is just 
like phenomenal this game. You know, the damage being dealt where it needs to be, it's like being mitigated where it needs to be, and every every single time, everyone's just making out with like a sliver of health, I, like what they want. That's just really fortunate. That was a beautiful tail ult though. Oh wow, so nice. This dies. Picks up the fist. Good effort. This might be game. We have Blitz Pain and Dr. Up. They should be able to actually save a couple of turns. GG's come oh wait, GG comes out from Dr. K. Hook lands. He gets played back. I don't think I can be able to do anything though. Face of the mountain comes out super early from Kaiser Ravenger. Interesting. It's frosty just Wow, they're blowing so much to try to just pick up the Kaiser Ravenger. They're just taking so much damage. It's not a better not all. Okay. Is Donna still not going for life steal? What is she doing? She can't sustain in the fight. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, typically, like, most AD carries, like, auto attack AD carries for Stana, Caitlyn, they typically do go for the Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer build, sometimes Shiv if they're behind. Um, I think, I think this is the right choice, though. I'm not sure. Like, it, I don't know if she's getting blown up. Like, usually, what you want to do is you want, um, IE, PD, and then last word for, for the armor. That is yeah. true, but that's still really not. Yeah, like. They finally get the mid turret. Wow, Lee Sin gets hooked. What are you doing now? Oh, aggressive. Oh, defensive jump. Lee Sin's still alive. He has come in. Oh, the end of his wild card hits the twisted fate, or hits the blitz tank. Knock and flashes. Kale teleports in. Or no teleport, just walks in, gets a double kill. Good chunk of water. Kale ult prevents any damage from that. Wow, they're just gonna walk down. <laughs> Teleport comes in from the Kale, trying to kill the Fizz. But good Kale ult saves the TF. Yeah. Um, I guess... <laughs> Snicker is doing some... Uh, <laughs> you know, right now I think... Oh, Dr. Like, Hayes! Wow, the damage from the wild card. Oh, Sean finally gets the Kale, gets shut down. Lee Sin's gonna die. No! Good land. Wow, good This is game. Good game, well... Yeah. They just were like a much more better coordinated team. The purple team was playing too solo queue. Damn, good game. I, I guess I do wanna I, I do wanna make a quick point though on, on the lifesteal issue. Like for people with like Tristana like Tristana and Caitlyn, you know, like ideally if if you're able to poke and sustain, like stay back without getting blown up, then like you don't need the lifesteal because that 6% should be enough to last you over the, over the course of the time. Uh, you know, like, people like Wild Turtle, like, I, I know, like, you know, that's, like, a stretch, but, like, sometimes he, like, doesn't build lifesteal at all just because he knows that he maintain outside of damage distance while, made, uh, like, maintaining the consistent source of damage on them. Um, uh, but, yeah, like, you know, Tristana, like, he was either like gonna be putting out the damage or like getting blown up instantly and you know a little bit of lifesteal might not have mattered as much like that much if she's getting blown up instantly by kale twisted fate lucian like lee sin like every single time so yeah um mvp votes i think this is really this is this is straightforward i think um I, i'm just gonna say kale and fizz uh I, i'm I gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna agree with Fizz, but I think Twisted Fate did a lot. Uh, did more. You think so? Uh, okay, so I guess give me your reasons for that. And okay, I'll give you my, okay. my 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 big reason for why Twisted Fate though is just because like you know he was able to put so much pressure on top and bot bottom the bottom and top just like getting the picks starting you know like every single team fight that happened when you know they were even in kills for until like. The 20 ish kills and every single team fight after that just completely snowballed. Uh, like, I don't know if this mattered as much, but like, those team fights were started because Twisted Fate got a good pick in their jungle, which allowed them to, you know, snowball up the map, up towards one side, up towards the other side. Like, I don't know if, like, by at, at that point, like, they were gonna win already and, like, you know, that just, like, sort of ensured the victory, but like, the TF picks, the TF pressure, like, starting from the beginning, like, his ultra, like, almost always got a kill. Like, I think the amount of pressure that was put on, but by there was just like very very high mm. so my thoughts on the kale were just the beautiful ult that she laid down mitigated so much of the fizz damage like i agree that twisted fate, fate applied a lot of pressure and he did manage to land a really good ult that 
more or less swung fights in favor of blue side. Actually, damn. Okay. You're Wait, kind of actually, me. no. Like now that you think of now that I think about it, like Twisted Fate, the also really nice, but like I think that they didn't impact the game. They didn't impact the game. They kind of just secured kills Whereas that were happening. Kale, Kale showed up when she needed to. She put the ults when she needed to. She put on the damage when she needed to. And I, I want to say a good portion of why Kale survived for so much of the, you know, the whole team survived was because good ults, good heals, good like control of the team. So like I, I think I'm gonna have to agree. Okay, yeah, so Kale gets MVP, Renekton gets MVP, not Renekton, I'm sorry, Renekton does not get MVP. Uh, Fizz. Fizz gets MVP. Uh, oh, Renekton just, uh, I'm going to say Renekton's build is Dr. Hayes' fault, because as he, as stated in the very first UPSL game this season, it is the captain's job to just yell at their teammates and just tell them how to build, especially if they build poorly. So, Dr. Hay should have told Taishan to build Bork, and, or just not even finish Bork. You know, like... That was just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. and overall, this game, was, it was exciting. There were a lot of kills, but, like, you know, what it came down was, like, the communication, the teamwork, and that just wasn't there for Purple Side. And, like, you know, maybe they didn't have enough practice. Maybe, like, Mahir's, uh, maybe Snickers' team did, like, did have the practice, didn't know how to play with each other, but, like, their communication really, like, they were even for a good amount of time. It's just the pressure, the communication, the safety, the picks, everything about that just like swung it to their side. You know, I've got to say, uh, you know, everyone, like, everyone on blue side actually played relatively, or purple, rather. Everyone on purple actually played relatively well. I would say they were just a bit too bloodthirsty, at least Blitzcrank was, yeah. or Venom Guy was. Too many forced engages with poor vision and no one around led to a lot of people sacrificing themselves trying to save Blitzcrank or trying to turn it around. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There were poor decisions, but I mean, like, it was it was a good game. Um, just I don't know, like the Kale getting out of control early was like uh, very unfortunate for for Purple Side. Yeah, and I think even if they did want to do the two v one strategy, I mean, I guess they did. I mean, I guess they just did normal lanes. No real pressure from Lee Sin uh, on for Kale's lane, so I think Renekton can actually deal with Kale relatively well. Like, <laughs> it just it's really how you play that lane. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was fun. Yeah, that was actually no. That was a that was a good game to watch. It was really wow. exciting. It's forty one twenty four. How did that happen? In that a thirty was, minute game too. <laughs> it was it was like eighteen. It was like eighteen to fifteen. Like ten minutes, minutes ago. ago. Yeah, ten yeah. minutes ago. Wow. Yeah. Lots of throws or lots of lots of people getting cut. Lots of action throughout. <sighs> All right, GG. GG. Yeah.